Hi, I'd like to give you a free gift. It's the Gospel of John. It's from the Bible. If you'd like a copy of this Gospel of John, free of charge, send your name and address to the email on the screen or put it in the comments section below and I'll make sure I get a copy in the mail to you. The Apostle John was one of Jesus's closest followers and in his Gospel we find his account of the good news of Jesus Christ. Are you familiar with the good news of Jesus Christ? Well, if you got a minute, I'd like to explain it to you. I'm going to use this little booklet that was developed by Dr. Bill Bright. It's called, Have You Heard of the Four Spiritual Laws? And in it, there are four laws that make it easier for us to understand the good news of Jesus Christ. And then each one of the laws is supported by verses from Scripture, from the Bible. So the first law says that God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. The first scripture is from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16, where Jesus says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Our second scripture is also from the uh, Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10, where Jesus says, The thief comes but to kill and to steal and to destroy. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But you know, if you look at these first two uh, scriptures in the first law, talking about God's love and his wonderful plan for your life, and then you look at the world today, there's somewhat of a disconnect. The world today, there's all kinds of evil. There are gangs and terrorists and teenage shooters, bullies, drug dealers, prostitutes, pornography, cybercrime, elder abuse, human trafficking, and the list just keeps going on. Well, our second law helps us to uh, explain this uh, discrepancy. And uh, the first scripture for our second, the second law says that man is sinful and separated from God. Therefore, he cannot know and experience God's love and plan for his life. The first scripture for the second law is from the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23, where the Bible says, all, not some, but all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In uh, Dr. Bright's booklet, there's a, a diagram showing sinful man on one side and holy God on the other side. And a great gap or gully in between. Sinful man tries to reach holy God by being a good person, doing good things for others, attending church services, being religious. But he always falls short. Our second scripture for the second law is from the uh, as well, book of Romans as well. Uh, Romans 6, verse 23, where the Bible says, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So there is a way back for sinful man to a holy God, and that way is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, our third law says that Jesus Christ is God's only provision for man's sin. Through him you can know and experience God's love and plan for your life. The first scripture for the third law is from the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 8, where the Bible says, God showed his love for us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, our Heavenly Father loves you and me so much that he was willing to sacrifice the life of his only Son in payment for the penalty for our sin, so that we might be restored and renewed in fellowship with him. Our second scripture for the third law is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 6, where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father, but by me. See, Jesus is telling himself, telling us himself that he is the only way for us back to the Father. But it's not enough to know these things or even to mentally assent to them. The fourth law says you must individually receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Then you can know and experience God's love and plan for your life. The first scripture for the fourth law is from the uh, Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 12 where the Bible says but to all who received him who believed in his name he gave them the power to become the children of God who are born not of the flesh nor the will of man but of God you see when you accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord you're born again and you become a child of God this is further clarified in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 where the Bible says 
For it is by grace that you have been saved, through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, lest any man should boast. You see, when you accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, you receive God's free, unmerited gift of grace, through which you're born again, and you become a child of God. The book of Revelation, chapter 3, 20, verse 20, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and sup with him, and he with me. There's a famous painting that was done about this scripture by William Holman Hunt. He calls it the light of the world. And in this painting, Mr. Hunt shows a picture of Jesus standing in front of a cottage door in a garden scene, knocking on the door. Now, one of the very interesting things about the painting is that there is no door handle on the door. And what Mr. Hunt is portraying is that Jesus doesn't yank open the door of your heart and barge his way into your life. You can't do that. There's no door handle. No, instead, you must open the door from the inside and invite him in. And you do that through prayer. Would you like to say a prayer with me to invite Jesus Christ into your life to be your Lord and Savior? Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I am sorry for my sin. I turn away from my sin and I turn to you. I ask you to make me the person you want me to be. That's the person that I so desire to be. Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart and I invite you to come in and be my Lord and Savior. And I pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. Now that you've prayed that prayer, you have been saved. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9, the Bible says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, which you did, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, which you do, you will be saved, which you were. For a man believes in his heart, and so is justified, and confesses with his lips, and so is saved. Now that you have been saved, born again, and become a child of God, I have four suggestions for you to help you grow and mature in your Christian walk. The first suggestion is to spend some time each day reading your Bible. You see, the Bible is God's love letter to you, and in it there are many things that he wants you to know. But you have to open it up and read it to find out what they are. So what I suggest you do is to start with the Gospel of John. If anybody would like a copy of the Gospel of John that I'm offering free of charge, send your name and address to the email on the screen, and I'll get a copy in the mail to you. <coughs> So, start with the Gospel of John, set aside some time each day, find a quiet place, and read a page or a paragraph, whatever you have time for. The amount you read is not as important as it's establishing the daily habit. Then when you finish with your reading for the day, just take a few minutes to reflect on what God has just said to you through those passages of Scripture that you've completed. Also, now that you've become a Christian, you should read the Bible as a participant. Before you became a Christian, when you read the Bible, you were reading about those Christians and what they did. Now that you've become a Christian, when you read the Bible, you'll be reading about those Christians, but you'll be learning to do as they do. The second suggestion I have for you to help you grow and mature in your Christian walk is to establish a daily prayer time. Now, prayer is just simply talking to God, having a conversation with God. You can talk to God about anything you want, any time, any place, anywhere. He's always there to listen and to hear your prayer. So what I suggest you do is to set aside a time each day, find a quiet place, then just strike up a conversation with God. Tell him what's going on in your life. Tell him the good things, the bad things, the happy things, the sad things. Is there anything coming up in your life in the near future that you're worried or concerned or anxious about? Maybe having to do with your work or your family or your church? Well, tell God about it. Ask Him for help. He'll guide you through it step by step. You'll be successful. What about healing? Do you know anybody who is sick and needs healing? Ask God to heal that person. He can do that. What about questions? Do you have any questions you'd like to have answers to? Again, you can ask God. He knows the answers, and he'll tell you. 
Then when you're finished saying what you have to say for the day, then it's time for the second part of the conversation. Remember, conversations have two parts, talking and listening. So far, you've been doing all the talking. Now it's time for you to do all the listening. Listen to what God has to say in answer to the prayers that you have just lifted up to him. My third suggestion for you to help you grow and mature in your Christian walk is to ask God to help you find a church where there are other Christians who believe in Jesus as you do, and you can support and build up one another. Now, I'm not suggesting that you rush out and join a church. I am suggesting that you go out and visit the different churches in your area, talk to the pastor, talk to the people, attend a worship service, anything else they might have, Sunday school, Bible study, prayer meeting. Then when you find a church that you like, Join it. Become an active member. The fourth suggestion that I have for you to help you grow and mature in your Christian walk is to tell others about Jesus. Now, you don't have to be a biblical scholar or have a degree in theology in order to tell others about Jesus. That's just, that's just not necessary. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says, If anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Some of the things you used to do, you probably won't want to do anymore. Other things that you've never done before, like daily Bible, daily prayer at church on Sunday, you'll begin to do. Others will notice this change in you, this difference. And when they ask you about it, it's a perfect opportunity for you to tell them all about Jesus and what he means to you. Well, that's the good news. Thank you for listening and for staying to the end. For those of you who prayed and received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, please drop me a note to the email on the screen or put it in the comments section below. I'd love to continue to lift you up and support you in prayer. If anybody would like to have a copy, a copy of the Gospel of John that I'm offering free of charge, send your name and address to the email on the screen and I'll get a copy in the mail to you. But for now, I pray that the Lord will richly bless you and keep you, that the Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you that the Lord will lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And I pray this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you.